Hi and welcome everyone to another episode of Gaming with Jason. So I have not been doing a lot of updates because I have been in a lot of fights. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a battle report of what's been going on for the last few days. Uh, so that you can kind of keep up because I have had to be on this server if it wasn't for the fact that I had the activity that I had, I would have lost this. Uh, I have, uh, and so let, let me kind of walk you through what happened. So when I first started out, I came over here to Amsterdam and Norway wanted to come into Amsterdam. And so he came in here, he took that from me, I took it back, and then he decides he wants to march. So I kill all his troops, and then I go up here and I start killing him again. Uh, and I took his capital city and all of his other cities because he was a moron. Why, why would you continue attacking me? I wasn't going to continue. I was just going to go ahead and kick him out of this. But he wanted to continue and start marching, which is why uh, that whole war started. He ends up losing whining, and then he goes over to UK and says, Oh, oh, I'm hurt, I'm hurt. And UK, like a moron, decides that he wants to take this guy on into his coalition and start a whole war with me so um before that all happened though uh, belarus i don't know what happened him and ukraine probably got into it ukraine also took out part of russia so i'm presuming that russia is out of the game as well so europe is destroying itself and all i had to do really was sit back and defend myself because defending myself was pretty much the only thing that I could do. And if you look here, I've gone up here, I've taken all of this. Uh, let's see here. Oh, and then I even moved all of my troops down here. Uh, and, and I came down here and helped out. So I took his capital city. I am taking the rest of his cities because he decided that he wanted to attack me. Uh, yesterday and the reason why he decided to attack me was because uh it was because norway convinced uk to let him in and at the same time i was messaging uk and i i i because he had he had a four slots filled and there was one open i wanted one for me one for japan i said hey uh me do you have a spot open for me in japan and that's when he takes norway and says nope sorry can't do it and then he sends Italy after me because he's he's a punk. He ha there are leaders out there that will send everybody else off to fight, but then they won't fight themselves. And that's exactly what UK is doing. So I, I made sure to tell Italy, yeah, your your guy is um he he's he's gonna screw you. And Italy, I I, I talked to him and I'm like, hey Italy, um wait a minute, hold on a second here. Okay, wait, that's the wrong side. So I, I'm I'm talking to Italy, and I'm uh, I told him that I was talking with UK, and then next thing I know, I'm getting attacked after I find out that Norway joined uh, joined UK coalition, and he says, he says, uh, well I don't know where to go. I says, well man, you're Italy. Italy should be taking Spain, and uh, and France. That that's kind of where Italy is. Whoever there there can only be one of these three countries has to win. But th these three countries need to be merged for proper resource production. So I told him that. And I said you should be going after Africa. You shouldn't be coming here after after me. Uh, and uh, you know, especially considering I told him that we were in toxic. So I explained that to him. He went to peace. But because I found out what they did with Norway, that really irritated me. So I took the city back, and then I went and I just started marching on him. And I took another one of his cities. He is not going to join. I have personally destroyed all or most of UK's coalition. And like I said, I've been fighting. It is now day 12. I have been fighting for 11 days straight. Uh, and I, as you see, the only way I'm able to expand is because I'm winning a battle, but I have to constantly keep troops at home because I am constantly getting marched on, which means what I really had to do here because, uh, Belarus, when I started marching, he just followed behind me and tried to take it. So, uh, but as you can see, he's probably still up here and I'm going to leave him alone for a minute. Um, but I'm going to send my recon in here and I think I am going to help. Uh, Morocco because so Morocco and Iran are my new addition so it's been me and Japan the whole time and Morocco just joined us and uh, just joined this morning and so did Iran 
and both of them are pretty strong. So one thing that I find really strange is, as you see here, I've been getting attacked. I have not been on the offense. I have barely been able to take things. I am struggling to keep troops. And let me show you like how many troops I have, just so you understand what Europe is like, unlike the rest of the world. As you see, I have 28 units, and I am on top of the world. Uh, and then I've got Morocco right there with me. This is going to be an overall bloodbath. And I, I always tell you guys that Europe is going to be a bloodbath. I have been waiting to lose. Part of me has been kind of hoping to lose just to, you know, but I guess I've become such a good player over time and that I've learned a lot of defense because here's the thing. If you really want to prepare yourself for Germany, you need to really, really hone in your defenses. You need to be able to use the European doctrine and know how to use it in a defense uh, manner. And in a lot of ways, it doesn't matter about doctrine because defense is defense and it's each doctrine gives you better units. So that's the reason why you see me up here going mech heavy. Uh, and you know what? These mech have made a huge, huge difference in the way that I, I do everything. And if you look here, I haven't had a single city conquered. As you see, I have a hospital. And as you see, my population is going up. As you see, my resource production, even though I really haven't, I really don't have a lot. I mean, I've got a lot of open territory, but as you see, a lot of these cities have gone rogue because I had, I'm getting attacked by Belarus and I'm having to push out. And then once I push out, um, he's coming behind me. So I'm just trying to go through his cities. I'm raising them. I'm making sure that I take away his production so that I can sit there and defend because he's going to sit there and lick his wounds. While he's licking his wounds, I keep building and then I start sending reinforcements in to clean up this. And as others are coming in, I keep using my defense troops first and then whatever spare I have, I send them out into the field to conquer more territory because here's the thing, as your enemy starts losing forces as they start u losing units it leaves them vulnerable uh this is this is probably the most important thing and this is why i am able to counter and not have a lot of troops is because i spend it in defense and this is probably the best way if you were playing the eastern doctrine what i'm doing here you'd probably be having a lot more success because you'd have the gunship helicopters with the added bonus uh you would have infantry which are stronger than the uh than the rest of the doctrines and you know and then you also you, you have your tanks uh which are good but you can also use your your recon vehicles and the eastern doctrine is really good anything armor when it comes to eastern doctrine i pretty much consider it to be better than the other doctrine because that is what made russia russia that is why that is the 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 power play that russia has had for close to 100 years is that they got tanks they got more tanks than us and they can build more tanks and quicker than us and so that armor plays into their doctrine and so uh but here in europe it, it does work a little bit the same way because you can almost consider your your you're mechanized to be a light armor division or a light armor battalion. Uh, it's it it will be able to compete with the tanks um, if you send proper armor with it. It is the only proper counter to the Eastern doctrine. Um, but as you see, I have been fighting Eastern and you're mostly Eastern. No, I've been fighting half and half Eastern and European. So my next my next play in all of this is to go after uh well i might actually see if i could talk morocco into taking france and tell him that italy is down and he can take france and then i am um i'm gonna start working on uk i'm kind of i'm out of the woods now um coming into day 12. Uh, i have the ability to take all of uh all of italy uh i can keep what i have of norway I'm leaving Finland to take Sweden, and I asked him to take this top part here, and it looks like he has. Um, and then I've got this here, and him and I can work on this together now that I know that I have some help here. 
and then my next uh, so we give morocco this and then me and morocco can work on uk you, uh but as you see i'm about to have a big big expansion because now because i've defended i've defeated and i've countered every single attacker that has come after me uh and beat them i am now the ruler of europe and i can i can kind of start to i need to shore up this area here um this top area where poland is and then i can start working on down here to greece but now that i have iran he can come up in here and he can shore some of this up for me um but he can also go into saudi but um a lot of things have opened up uh, you should never count yourself out until you are fully defeated uh, and I, I say this over and over and over again, and as you see, this is why. So I will see you guys on the next playthrough or on the next update of my playthrough, and I'm going to start nicknaming them Battle Reports, uh, either Battle Report, Battle Report Update, uh, as my playthroughs, because really that's what you guys are interested in uh, for the most part, is how I'm fighting how I'm using my units, and how the game is actually playing out. So I will see you guys in the next battle report. And I, Hi and welcome everyone to a day, I think it's 4, which is battle report 12, day 12 through uh, 16. And as you can see here, I am cleaning up, uh, I am cleaning up uh, Belarus and Ukraine, and I'm going to go after Poland here in a minute, but I'm still kind of cleaning up my mess. Uh, I've got Morocco here. I told him he could have the rest of uh, the, the rest of uh, of Italy and that includes down here in the boot and he is he also took this and I also asked him to take this but uh, UK because of the attack that was happening because uh, I, I let I let Morocco know that, hey, if you want to attack the UK, go for it. He, he's fair game. He's been attacking me uh, all game or getting other people to attack me. Because of, of how much turmoil that, that was was going on here, I, I really wasn't planning on the UK coming, uh, going after the UK. I figured I would get to clean up Italy and do my other stuff if I could just get Morocco to go after UK and get some fresh territory. But what ended up happening is UK thought he would try and get by on me. I didn't lose a single city uh, yesterday. Uh, as a matter of fact, I gained cities. But if you see here, he came in through here with the with, with a tank uh, battalion. He tried coming in through here twice, once with a recon battalion and once with a tank, uh, a small tank division. Uh, he did not try and come in here so and he did come in here so i yeah i did lose this city uh but actually no i gained it lost it and then had to retake it is really what happened uh because this was originally his territory so all i wanted to do was kick him out of here so that i could have the mainland uh up, up in through here and stuff like this okay uh, so this whole this whole thing ended up escalating Luckily, I had one wing of strike fighters. Uh, the strike fighters did me really good. Uh, I had three when I started, and I think I should, yeah, I have five now. But I had three when I started, and so I was able to pick up two. And at, this is after losing like three or four of them uh, in the first few days just in heavy fighting. So the fact that I have a stack uh, makes a huge difference. Now I can actually uh, do really good defense. And so I was able to kind of halfway take out his Corvette and warn Morocco that the Corvette was coming over here uh, so that he could turn his attention there. So Morocco was able to get that. And then also I caught him trying to go down into here or down into here with Morocco uh, when it comes to uh, when it was coming to his retaliation. But he sent about 80 percent of his forces at me through this little area right here. And he, uh, he he really wasn't successful because as he was landing, I had my strikers hit um, here. And as soon as my strikers whittled it down enough to where my homeland defense, uh, because I kept troops there, to where my homeland defense could uh, 
could uh, safely defend the territory, then I focus it on another one instead of just, uh, you know, either splitting them up and then causing more damage to myself or uh, just focusing on one and forgetting about the other and hoping to God it works out. And so I, I had a mech division. And here's the one big thing that I've learned about the European doctrine. European doctrine, and I'm going to do a separate video on this, so I don't want to talk too much about it. But do, if you are a subscriber, keep an eye out for it. If you're not a subscriber and you play the European doctrine, uh, you're going to learn some things because you've probably been playing it all wrong. With that being said, <clears throat> with that being said, with the with the European doctrine, the mech the the mechanized infantry is the most valuable infantry you can have. I would strongly strongly recommend getting mech as soon as possible because it's going to turn the tide. This is actually this is actually what helped me win the battle. So you might ask yourself, well, why did he win the battle? And, and here's here's the real reason is because if you look at any infantry, so I got infantry right here, any infantry, even a level two, he's going to do four and two, okay? Four against infantry, two against armor. Whereas with the mech, you are getting six and seven. So this is like a light infantry. And see, in the European doctrine, uh, you get an extra 20% infantry damage. So instead of getting a 4.5 like the rest of the uh, like the rest of the other doctrines, the Western and the Eastern, you get an extra point and a half, which makes a huge, huge difference uh, because you multiply that by five, six, or seven, and you now have a really good armor division. And I mean, you you literally could just walk away and, and take all of Europe with mech until they start bringing in tanks. And then you bring in your tank destroyers, and there's not an armor unit in the world that could stand up to you at that point. The Eastern Doctrine would not be able to stand up to you, and the American Doctrine definitely wouldn't be able to stand up to you uh, when it comes to land forces. I think when it comes to land forces, and if you really want to play a land game, European Doctrine is the way to go. European is for land. Uh, and I, I would say that the American is more for air, and uh, if you're doing Eastern, it's more for armor and specialized infantry, uh, like airborne, uh, or if you just want to stick with regular infantry and you don't want to build like mech warriors, because it requires a level two uh, army base, and I think it also requires a recruiting office as well. And so these things you got to consider, but this is the reason why I'm able to hold my own is because it's like having a, a recon vehicle and an infantryman all rolled up into one and I get the best of both worlds. So I can send them after an armor unit and I don't have to worry about losing a major amount of my forces. And this is important uh, if you're ever going to play the, the European doctrine. And so with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign out for today. You now see the battle report of everything that's gone on. Um, and if you like this information, hey, subscribe. If not, um, maybe in the next video you'll find a little bit more valuable and helpful. And then maybe I'll get you to subscribe then. All right. Have a great day, guys. And uh, thank you for watching.